Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Master Computer Science Subject. In this video, we will see the pass 1 of uh, assembler. Okay, let us see, uh, let us understand first what are the functions we need to do during the pass 1. Once again, we recollect. Already I have described about in this, in the previous video. The very first thing is, it assigns addresses to all the instructions. Assembler assigns addresses to all the instructions in the given program. Then the second function is, it saves the addresses of all the labels into the symbol table. Of course, it processes some of the assembler directives also. Okay, let us try to understand the functions of the assembler in pass1 with an example. So, this is the example I have taken. Alright, just look into the column. This is a complete program. Label, pneumatics are operator and the operands. Apart from the program, I have added some more columns here. One is location counter, another one is format. Okay, first we fill this format. This is for our comfortability, comfort and the understanding. Uh, start is an assembler directive. So, let me write here ASCM. Clear is an uh, SICXC instruction, but it is format 2. Format 2 means its length is 2. That is a point we need to remember here. Again, this is also an SICXC instruction. It belongs to the format 3. So, its length is 3. TD, its format is also 3. Jump on equal, its format is also 3. Load character, its format is 3. WD means a write data, its format is also 3. But this test and increment register, it belongs to format 2. So, its length is 2, 2 bytes. JLT 3 bytes, written subroutine is also 3 bytes. Again, byte is an assembler directive, end is also an assembler directive. Except assembler directives such as byte and uh, word, the rest of the assembler directives never be translated into object code. Of course, the assembler directive byte and word also are, cannot be translated into object code. But the data value, whatever it specifies, it will be written in the hexadecimal format. That will, it will be written in the hexadecimal format during pass 2. Okay. Now, for the given example, we have identified what format each instruction belongs to. Now, let us execute the very first function. What is the first function? Assign addresses to all the instructions. Okay. Let us start assigning the instructions. Write record is a name of the subroutine. Start gives the starting address of the program. What is the starting address here? It is 405D. So, this is the first instruction of the subroutine. For this instruction, I am writing the starting address as 405D. Yes, I have written. Now, the starting address of clear x is 405d. This instruction occupies 2 bytes. If this instruction occupies 2 bytes, what is the address of the next instruction? Very simple, 405d plus 2. But we need to remember that these values are given in hexadecimal. All the addresses are hexadecimal values. So, when you are adding, we have to perform hexadecimal addition. 405d plus 2 is... 405E, 405F. Okay, next. The starting address of this instruction, LDT length is 405F. This instruction from 405F, it occupies 3 bytes. It means what is the address of the next instruction? 405F plus 3. So, what is 405F plus 3? 5F. Then 4060, 4061, 4062. You can use the calculator also to perform this addition. Then 4062 is a starting address of this instruction. To find the address of the next instruction, this 3 bytes must be added to this. So that we will be getting 4065. Similarly, to find the address of load character, we should add 3 bytes with this. So, we would be getting 4068. Load character instruction is also of 3 bytes. Its starting address is 4068. 
Further, it occupies 3 bytes. So, 4068 plus 3 is 6968A 6B. It is 406B. To find the address of the next instruction, very simple, 406P plus 3. So, it is 6C, 6D, 6C. 406E. Let us write here. Okay. Now, the address of this, uh, sorry, the length of this instruction is 2 bytes. And the starting address is 406E. What is the address of the next instruction? 406E plus 2. 6C plus 2 means 406C plus 1 is 6F. Then another plus 1 is 4070. 4070. Then 4070 plus 3 will give you the address of the next instruction which is 4073. 4073 plus 3 is the total length of the memory occupied by this subroutine starting from 405D. Right. Now, we will give the address for this uh, label also. 4073 plus 3 is 4076. Right. Now, we identified almost addresses for all the instructions. Now, let us move on to the second step. What is the second step being given? We need to save the addresses of the labels in the symbol tables. So, what are the labels we have here? We have three labels in this program. One is write record, another one is w loop, and the next label is output. Write record is the name of the program. Of course, we can push into the symbol table, but you cannot assign any value. Let us assign the default value, which is zero. Right? The next, we have the label called w loop. What is the value for this W loop? At what address this label is available or this label is referring to? It is referring to the address 4062. Let me write it here. Next, the label what we have is output and its corresponding value is 4076. Right. This is the symbol table. Apart from the label and the values, the symbol table carries the information of the registers supported by SICXE, AXL, PC, SW, B, S, T, F. Of course, and the corresponding mnemonic addresses for A it is 0, X it is 1, L it is 2, for B it is 3, S it is 4, T5, F6, then for PC it is 8, for SW it is 9. These registers and their corresponding mnemonic addresses, these information are also available in the symbol table. So, these are the actions or the functions done by the assembler during pass 1. In pass 2, every instruction is assembled or translated into its corresponding object code. That we will do it or see it in another video. Thank you.